Welcome to Deep Shadows, an eclectic full-contact theater audio drama series written by Aaron Mays and Colette Cullen. Please like, follow, subscribe, or drop a review anywhere you listen to podcasts. While investigating the suspicious death of a former client, dedicated social worker Joelle Franklin battles corruption, classism, and a broken, underfunded system while also dealing with the strains the investigation places on her family and loved ones, including girlfriend Siobhan and her brother Michael, a Cook County Sheriff. How far will Joelle push, and what will she sacrifice to get to the truth? This is Deep Shadows. Quote, Through shared sacrifice and cooperation, we were able to develop and pass a balanced budget, Cook County Board President said yesterday. Quote, we have had to make exceedingly difficult but necessary choices, but we have met our fiscal obligation to the people of Cook County, while at the same time protecting key public health and public safety services. End quote. Virtually every department in the county is facing cuts, with the greatest number of layoffs coming from the sheriff's department. Hey, Joelle, I was listening to that. Sorry, babe. It's so depressing. How are my eggs doing? Perfect timing. They're just about ready. Will you pour the coffee? I think children and family service were just about to get a mention. Yeah, that's what's so depressing. Always the most vulnerable. The sheriff's department? Mm. It's just optics, but we really are going to suffer. There's already a ban on filling vacant positions, which is madness. I thought someone new just joined. Nevin? (laughs) He's an internal transfer from admin. Now we're down one staff member, so as well as having to juggle more cases with less staff, we have to do our own admin just so someone's left to answer the phones. That's crazy. Rita's called a meeting today, which, to be honest, I'm dreading. There's hardly going to be layoffs, are there? Who knows? Anything's possible. Well, let's change the subject. What have you on today? Tutorials, mostly, but I'm hoping to grab a couple of hours in the darkroom. Working on something new? More stuff for the exhibition. Which is? When I have enough decent stuff to show. You've been saying that for months. What's your verdict on the eggs, seeing as you polished them off so quickly? Because I'm in a hurry. But a definite improvement. (laughs) Excuse me? On that linguine that we had at your place last week. (laughs) You're not still going on about the linguine. My studio doesn't have a full kitchen, not like here. And I didn't read the instructions properly. That's all. More coffee? Hmm. And just half a cup. There's something sticking out of your back pocket, by the way. Talk about depressing. A letter I'm too scared to open. You're joking. From Immigration Services. Even saying their name scares me. Came yesterday. You can't ignore stuff like that, Siobhan. My working life is spent dealing with the shit that happens when people ignore stuff like that. Give it here. Is it bad? They're reviewing your visa. Probably just routine. Nothing's just routine with them. My fellowship is almost up, that's why. I thought that was all figured out ages ago. I tried to, but you know what the Institute's like. It took months for them to process my visa for me to come here in the first place. Go into the office today, demand they make it a priority. Say you're not leaving until they figure it out. (laughs) Yeah, right. I'm serious, Siobhan. You've got to nail it down. He who shouts loudest gets the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I bow to your better knowledge of the Bible, but I'm sure that that's not how it goes. It's Marion. I'll let it ring out. Mm, No, take it. I have to go. But get that extension figured out today. We've weeks, not months, Siobhan. And those weeks go by pretty fast. Yes, ma'am. 
Say hi to Marion for me. You can say hi yourself. I got a dash. Oh, remember, I'm out with her tonight. Unless this is her cancelling. I'll check in on you later. I'll see if you're coming back here or going to your studio. Hiya. You just missed Joelle. The Scarlet Pimpernel. That's what Michael calls her. I'm going to tell her that. Oh, it's no secret. He says it to her face. But you know Joelle, like water off a duck's back. <laughs> hey, that's my girlfriend you're talking about. And his sister and my sister-in-law. Sounds busy there. It's crazy. My shift finished an hour ago, but there's no one to hand over to. I hope they're paying you overtime. Girl, please. Not even Michael's getting paid overtime anymore. It's been cancelled for everyone. Those damn budget cuts. Yeah, Joelle has some big meeting about them today. Can we meet a little later? Michael's got choir practice straight after work. Sure. We can make it another time if you like. No way. It's the only thing keeping me going. The thought of a nice bottle of wine and a decent chat at the end of the day. I'll change the reservation and get back to you later. No problem. Gives me more time in the dark room. How's it going? Slowly. Very slowly. Better go. Duty beckons in the shape of a gunshot wound just out of x-ray. Oh, that's now starting to bleed out again. See you later. Jesus. Yeah. Later. Everything we spend down to the last dime has to be approved by a line manager or me. Look, I get it. This is shit. We're already understaffed and overstretched, and it's going to get worse. But the alternative is staff layoffs, and I'm trying my best to avoid that. Let's all just pull together to maintain our services and to hopefully keep all our jobs. Joelle, can I have a quick word, please? Yeah, uh, sure. Nevin, will you start putting that list together for the potential foster parents meeting? Sure thing, boss. I'm not your boss. I'm just your manager. Okay, boss. Joel. The name's Joel. Got it. Joel. An interesting name. I was thinking about you this morning. Not in a creepy, obsessive way, though. I, I mean, just your name. Nothing special about my name. A combination of Joseph and Ellen, my parents. Why not Joel and Jolene? I'm not sure, Nevin. You need to ask them, which might be difficult. Why? Where are your parents? Dead. Any more questions? Um, no, I... I better see what Rita wants. How's he working out? He's a pair of hands. Quite the endorsement. We keep an eye on him so he becomes a useful pair of hands. Look... I need you to draw up a list of potential staff layoffs. You've got to be kidding. You just said. I'm trying to keep morale up. The governor's office demanded a list from every department. If we don't provide it ourselves, HR will, and we could end up losing good staff rather than the dead wood. How do you know I won't just get rid of the people I don't like and keep the people I like? Because you're Joelle. And I know you always put the job first. Somehow that doesn't sound like a compliment. And obviously, keep it to yourself. If I must. Thanks, Joelle. By the end of the week, please. Hello? Joelle Franklin, Department of Children and Family Services. Who wants to know? A Detective Don Wallace, Cook County Sheriff's Office. Your name came up in our investigation. Could you drop by the office sometime today? Okay. I suppose. Am I in some sort of trouble, officer? <laughs> Actually, there's a little cafe a few doors down. Olives. We can meet there. It'll be a lot quieter than here, and the coffee's good. Text me when you're ten minutes away. Okay. Meeting for coffee sounds a lot less serious. Come on, Joel, answer. Come on, Joel, please answer. Joel? Sorry, only me. 
been trying to get Joelle all day, but as usual, her phone rings out, so I can't even leave a message. Everything okay? You sound a bit stressed. I just heard about my fellowship extension. Bad news? Well, no, not really. It's just, I need to have mounted my exhibition and have it reviewed before they can officially grant the extension. But you've been preparing for it for ages now, haven't you? Don't remind me. They given you some kind of impossible deadline? No. They've been quite good, actually. It's just immigration services are on my back, and if my fellowship isn't extended soon, my visa could expire. I've only got a few weeks to get all the paperwork together. Sounds serious. Hallelujah. I think my shift changeover's just arrived. I'm out of here now. I've made that reservation for eight, by the way. Look, don't worry. We can talk it over tonight. Great. See you then. We were just wondering why your card with your private cell on the back was in the apartment. Charmaine Smith's apartment. Yes, that's who the apartment is registered to. Has something happened to Charmaine? Let's take it one step at a time. How well did you know Charmaine? Like, when was the last time you saw her? I'm not sure. I may or may not have made a note of it in my diary. Admin's not my strong point. (laughs) I hear you there. Charmaine's not really an active client. She was one of my first emergency foster cases, and I mean emergency. I was called to the ER. Her mother had just died. No one knew who the dad was, and they couldn't trace any relatives. At least any relatives who were willing to look after a toddler. She's just over a year old. Poor little thing. She was so frightened. Were any relatives ever located? I assume not. Charmaine never mentioned any, and the last time I saw her, she was still in foster care. You kept in touch with her? Now and then. Over the years. Like I said, she was one of my first cases. And the last time you saw her, how did she seem? In good form. She was a quiet girl. Deep, but a good sense of humor. I remember we had Chicago dogs. I like to put ketchup in mine. Oh. I know, it's gross. Charmaine was teasing me, saying there's no way I was a local if... I liked it with ketchup. Look, has something happened to her? I'm getting a really bad feeling here. Please tell me if something has happened to her. The body of a young woman was found in her apartment. Oh, my God. Been there for a while. We're not really sure how long. It's dreadful. Do Marissa and Patrick know? Have you been in touch with them? Marissa and Patrick? Her foster parents? Uh, The apartment's in a facility called Prospect Heights for children coming out of foster care. They offer support and mentoring services, or are supposed to. Doesn't look like they gave much of either to whoever it is who's ended up dead. Last time I saw her, she was living with Marissa and Patrick. Our information is that she moved into Prospect Heights when her foster parents died about a year ago. You haven't seen her in a while, then? No, like I said, she was still living with Marissa and Patrick. They were lovely people. Charmaine was very happy, though. She had your card in private cell, how? Well, to be honest, my stuff's not all that private. I give it to some clients. You know, the ones I keep in touch with just in case, you know, they ever need to talk. Mostly they don't call, but I think they find it reassuring to have it like they feel less alone. Well, that's what a few of them have told me down the years. I'm sorry to give you such bad news. No matter how long I'm in the job, it's always upsetting when someone dies. Well, uh, thanks for the coffee. Will you let me know what's happening with the case? You know, when you confirm if it is Charmaine and how she died. I'd like to know what happened. Sure. Joelle, this is a surprise. Hi, Marian. Have you got a few minutes? If you don't mind me shopping at the same time. Do you remember a young woman died in childbirth, oh, about 16 years ago? 
I just started in fostering services, and you called me about her young daughter. Her name was Charmaine. Charmaine Smith. Vaguely. Well, the hospital couldn't trace any relatives, so I placed her in foster care. Looks like no relatives ever came forward to claim her because she stayed in care. I was just wondering if you got a chance you could check her mother's hospital file. Her name was Marlene. Marlene Smith. I'll text you the dates when I get back to the office. Sure. My friend Loretta works in records. I'll check in with her tomorrow, if that's okay. She'll be gone now. We both came off shift together, both waiting hours for our cover to show up. Thanks, Marin. That would be brilliant. Michael's not with you by any chance. No, he's probably at choir practice. He went straight from work. Want me to give him a message when I see him? No, no need. I'll catch up with him later. Have you spoken to Siobhan yet? No. Why? I had a couple of missed calls from her. Is she okay? She just had some news about her fellowship, but she'll fill you in about it later, I suppose. Yeah. Look, I better let you get back to your shopping. I'll call you when I talk to Loretta. Thanks, Mary, and I appreciate that. I was looking for Joelle. She's out on home visits. Are you helping her with the list for the potential foster parent meetings? Yes, she asked me to make a start on it. How's it going? Not too well. Not many of the people I contacted can make a daytime meeting. They're either working or have kids to look after. We normally do it in the evening, but that means having to pay overtime for security. Keep trying and let me know how you get on. We'll have to make a final decision first thing tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Rita. Yes, Rita. Joel? Joel, is that you? Michael. Oh, you nearly gave me a heart attack. <laughs> you were miles away. Yeah. Hearing that hymn really brought me back. To your baptism? Yeah, you sang it. <laughs> Was mom's favorite. And mine. Made me think of both of them. Mom and Pop. It was such a happy day. They were so proud of you singing in the church all on your own. I was terrified. My knees were knocking together. It, it was a good day, though. You didn't sound terrified. You sang it at a funeral, too, didn't you? Well, me and the choir. I wasn't a soprano anymore. What brings you here, anyway? I take it it's not to go to church. I wanted to pick your brain. Yeah, well, it'll have to wait. Uh, that's Marion asking if I'm on my way home. Gotta go. On babysitting duty. <laughs> She's having a night out with Siobhan. Yeah, Siobhan mentioned something. Why don't you come back with me? The girls would love to see you. <laughs> we usually order pizza and watch a silly movie. It'll be fun. <laughs> and if I know you large shakes as well. Marion would kill me if she found out I've been giving them shakes as well as pizza on a school night. Hey, what happens in Vegas? Exactly. I can plop them in front of the TV for a while and we can have a chat. We haven't caught up properly in a long time. 
I'll even allow you to pick my brains or what's left of them. Inviting as that sounds. I have to get back to work. I might catch you later, though. Marion again. Well, if you change your mind. Oh, guess who I bumped into the other day? Tony. Tony Gonzalez? Back working in some fancy law firm downtown. Uh, Creighton and... Uh... Creighton, Creighton and... Yeah. <gasps> That's the one. Say hi to the girls for me. Nevin, you still in the office? Yeah, Rita was on the prowl earlier looking for you and asking about that list. You know, for the potential foster parent meeting. I thought I'd have better luck if I rang later. I had the same idea. You like pizza? Who doesn't like pizza? There's a menu in my top drawer. Choose which one you want and text me. I'll grab them on the way back. Awesome. Vanilla, strawberry, or chocolate? Chocolate. I'm guessing you're vanilla. Is that supposed to be a joke? Huh? Joelle's still not back? She's on her way. What home visits was she making? Not sure. As soon as she gets back, tell her I want to see her. Yes, ma'am. Rita. Yes, Rita. Hello? Miss Peters? Nevin McGuire from Children and Family Services. Sure, I, I can call back at a more convenient time. Rita was just here looking for you again. The pizzas and shakes are in the kitchen. I'll see what she wants, but you go ahead and start on yours. Thanks, I'm starving. Joelle. Burn in the midnight oil? <laughs> I just brought pizza back for me and Nevin. If I'd known you were still here, I'd have gotten you one, too. You can split mine if you like. Pepperoni and peppers. Nevin's probably polished his off by now. Diablo with extra jalapeno. <laughs> Giving me heartburn just thinking about that. Don't worry, I'm about to leave. Have you made a start on the staff layoff list yet? The governor's office is on my back about it. No, I have another chance. We need to get a move on that potential foster parent meeting, too. Finalize the time. Nevin seems to think having it during office hours may be a problem, but I'd like us to keep on trying. Yeah, that's what I came back to do. I think we'll have a better chance reaching people at home now. Okay. What have you been up to all day anyway? That's what I want to talk to you about. Looks like an ex-client of mine has been found dead in a unit in Prospect Heights. The transitional unit for kids coming out of fostering? Yes. What's that got to do with us? Like I said, she was an ex-client. In fact, one of my first. I put her into care when her mother died in Providence. No relatives were ever found, so she stayed in foster care until she moved into Prospect Heights about a year ago. It's always tough when a client dies, no matter how long you're in this business. They're not even sure it is her or how long she's been dead for, by the sound of it. Poor kid. Was there ever any problems with her foster care? Not that I'm aware of, but I'll obviously be checking up on that. Have we received an official request? Not so far. Like I say, I just found it out today. If we get a formal request, we can look into it. Otherwise, leave it to the sheriff's office. That's what they get paid for. I just want to keep an eye on it. See that it's properly investigated. You know, with all these cuts in the sheriff's office, a young black woman who's been in care for most of her life with no known relatives is hardly going to be top priority. I just want to make sure that she doesn't end up falling through the cracks. I understand where you're coming from, Joelle. Believe me, I've had my share of clients who've ended up in bad places, but 
we're under enough pressure here ourselves because of those damn budget cuts. We need to prioritize clients who are still alive and leave the dead ones to the sheriff's office. It's their job, not ours. I know. I just want to do a bit of digging, see if I could come up with anything that may help with the investigation. That's all. If we get a formal request, we'll deal with it then. Otherwise, concentrate on your existing clients. Leave the police work to the experts. Is that clear? Crystal. And keep me posted on both of those lists. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for your time, ma'am. Deadly shake, Joel. Oh, pass me over that list. A pizza was deadly too. Not having yours? I seem to have lost my appetite. Uh, hello, Joel Franklin, Children and Family Services. May I speak with Miss Winters, please? Jesus, Joel. You frightened the life out of me. Oh, sorry. What are you doing sitting in the dark, anyway? Uh, you know. Is everything okay? I just had one of those days. You? Marion told you. Told me what? About the fellowship. So it's all figured out, then? Well, not exactly. And she didn't go into detail. Called you a couple of times at work to tell you about it. Guess you were busy. Yeah, like I said, it's been one of those days. It's not a problem, is there? More of a complication. But they're going to extend it? Eventually, but only after my exhibition is reviewed by at least one professional journal. Is that a problem? Yes. I have to mount the exhibition first. <laughs> You've been working on it for ages. I still have to finalize the images, print them have them framed and actually hang it all. But you've done that before. Lots of times, haven't you? Yes, but not with a gun to my head. <sighs> I don't understand. The exhibition then has to be reviewed. The review sent to the foundation so that they can release the funds to the Institute, who then have to issue me with an offer. All of this has to happen before my visa review by immigration services, which is, as you pointed out, happening in a matter of weeks. Oh. Yes. Oh. I'm so pissed off. The Institute has known about this funding condition for ages, but didn't bother telling me about it. Marion said I should hang blank images on the walls. The professional journals will think it's cutting edge and give me glowing reviews. Yeah, I don't think Marion knows much about art. It was a joke, Joelle. She was trying to cheer me up. I'm kind of upset and stressed out about it all. It's a lot of pressure. I don't want any problems with my visa. We'll just have to get on with it then. I know that, Joelle. It's just all a bit overwhelming. <sighs> You'll pull it off. I hope so. But kind of like to stick around. <sighs> Would you mind if I went to bed? I'm really zonked. Of course. I'm tired myself. Are you sure you're okay? Has something happened? Like I said, it's been a shit day. The meeting Rita called go okay? As expected. More work, less resources. And the threat of staff layoffs hanging over us. Oh, that's awful. Marion was saying it's the same with her and Michael. These budget cuts are doing everyone's head in. Yeah. I'm going to bed now. Will I make us some tea and bring it up? Oh, that'd be great. Thanks. Right, so. T. In other news, the body of a young woman believed to be... Too depressing. <laughs> that was Deep Shadows by Aaron Mays and Colette Cullen. Directed by Christina Cassano. Starring the voice talents of Dee Dee Batiste, Justice Hall, Nevada Montgomery, Leslie Ann Riley... Jordan Arredondo, Caitlin Jackson, Luis Bermudez, Julian Cerna, Lisa Savignago, and Andrew Pond. 
we'd like to thank everyone who supported Deep Shadows on Kickstarter, including Iris Leck, Soul Sword, Christina Kvandal, Jace Diaz, Marcel, Fotin Liakos, Ella Watts, Joey Johnston, J. Xander Kittenoha, Richard Iyer, Donaldson Cardenas, Kat McKay, Jesse Casanova, and Tyler Gilbert. The support of people like you through this lockdown has made it possible for EFCT to bring these stories to life. Now, if you want to support Deep Shadows, you can do so at redcircle.com slash shows slash deep dash shadows, where you can donate directly to this series. You can become part of the investigation at Patreon at patreon.com slash EFCT, where your monthly pledge gets you exclusive access to behind-the-scenes content and merchandise. Wary of commitment? We understand. You can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash EFCT, where you can make a one-time donation. No strings attached. Your support allows EFCT to continue to highlight the works of women, BIPOC, and LGBTQ artists. Thanks for listening. See you next week.